and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations and thanks for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. Um, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. We come at you at least twice a week with different crafts and different ideas. Um, and if you're returning, thanks for joining. So today I am going to do another um, Christmas mesh wreath. I've been having a lot of fun with this. I have a different idea for what I want to do with the center of it. And I want to do one that's in um, more of the blues and silvers than it is with the reds and the greens and things. So I have a wreath form and you want to have one, you can kind of see down here, that's got the four rings to it. It doesn't matter how many sections, but easiest with the four rings and whatever size works for you. Obviously, um, the bigger the wreath, the more mesh that you're going to need, but um, you got a big door, a big spot on your wall, get a bigger wreath, not a problem. We're gonna start by putting some plastic canvas into the center. I'm going to want to attach my inner section um, decoration to it. So I'm just going to kind of trace out my wreath form with a marker, um, just so I know roughly where to cut. And this stuff cuts really easily with just a regular pair of scissors. So no special tools for this. And we're just going to use, okay, it's just a little awkward. <laughs> it's not hard, just awkward. There, all right, off to the side. All right, we are just going to be attaching some, these with some zip ties. I have an awful habit of calling them twist ties, and I know they're not but forgive me if I do that. Now, because it curves one way, I am just going to be attaching it the opposite way, which just helps it stay flat, but there's no magic to that. And all that we're going to do is just go through my plastic. I just wanna make sure I don't get it where in an open little grid mark where I have already, where it's open. So I'm just going to simply attach this in and I just don't wanna skew it so, so hard that um, I have nothing on the other side. So I'm gonna put that one there and I'm gonna do the opposite side. I just find going, um, to start with the opposite side. Just helps me keep it a little bit centered better. And really, this is the most challenging part of the whole process. So the nice thing about these wreaths is that they really do make up very quickly and um, relatively, relatively easily. I think. So they make kind of a, a really nice, pretty craft project and you've got a lot of flexibility with the colors and the designs and you can go back and see, um, you know, one that I've done, a different Christmas one that I did with, with more of the traditional colors and with um, jingle bells in the center. It was fun, a little musical. And um, we've done one with burlap and wool in the center, so really chunky yarn in the center. So you can really create a lot of different looks with it. So, you know, you've got tons of flexibility and you don't have to put anything in the center if you want. I mean, you can, uh, you don't have to have this, this mesh here. You can do uh, lots of other other options if you want. Okay, I now have my mesh attached and I have trimmed off the back part of my zip ties. Now, I'm just using eight inch zip ties 
maybe six inch. So not super long. You could use the longer one. Some people like using the longer 10, 12 inches just because it gives them a little bit more maneuverability and flexibility. Okay, use that. Um, some people just uh, cut down pipe cleaners and they use that instead. And if those are easier for you, then use pipe cleaners. So there's no magic to this. So even though I'm using um, the zip ties, you have other options. So don't feel like you're locked into, into doing that. What we are gonna do is we start building our wreath from the outside in. And the first row that we're going to be attaching to is this, if this is the first row, we're gonna be using the second row. And that's only because then that outside row becomes kind of a, um, a ledge sort of for your first row of petals to lean against. If they were zipped on to this row, they would have the tendency to flop around, which again, once it's up on a wall is not an issue, but it makes getting it up on the wall and not having to futz with it a lot easier because this last outside row is keeping it all in place. Um, but again, if you wanted a really large wreath, you could start with this outside row quite easily. That's not gonna be a problem. I'm gonna start on the inside row. And the first color that I'm starting with, with um, this Deco Poly Mesh, is kind of this silvery blue. So it's not quite the bright silver, um, in, and it's not kind of like a, a gray, blue, silver sort of color. So I wanted this kind of a little bit sparkly, but not major. I'm thinking that we go into this color next, and then this outside, the inside would be this, this kind of deco mesh in the, they call this blue, but it's, it's sort of like more of a grayish, I think, more than anything else. And we're gonna start by cutting our mesh, and I'm gonna do it in 14 inch pieces, and normally I get this sort of marked off. So this is 14 inches wide, so in essence, I am going to cut it into a square. Sorry, this is 10 inches. So maybe I'll do a 10 inch square then. No, I'm gonna do, four. I'm just thinking and deciding as I go here. So 10 inches wide, I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do a 12 inch, well, let me just see as I, as I go to look at cutting this. 12 inches would be there. Ultimately it determines the length of my petals is where we're going with this. Okay, 12 inches would be okay. So, if I'm gonna be cutting here, so that's three inches, four inches, five, six inches. Okay, I'm just looking at where my cut line is going to be. So, I'm gonna mark my table and my board, just, that's my 12 inches based on where I've got this, just so that I'm not having to constantly get out my ruler and be able to measure this out. So, with this deco mesh, you could take your scissors, and what you wanna try and do is to kind of straighten it out a little bit with your hands, and then try, for the most part, to kind of cut down in between some of the segments. You can do that with your scissors if you want. Or, not if it's all wrapped around your glue gun, you can't. Or you could make your life a little bit easier. And I'm actually going to flip this over. I just find if it curls down, it's easier for me to keep it in place. And I am actually going to use a wood burning tool with the blunt edge. So you can see it's just kind of an angled edge. And I'm going to kind of melt my way down. Because this is a plastic mesh, it does it really easily. It's kind of the fastest, easiest way to do this. And you don't get as much fraying of the edges. Now, obviously hot, um, take care. It also means that I'm cutting on actually a marble surface. You could cut on glass, which would be awesome. Um, but if you're cutting on paper, you're cutting on plastic, you're gonna melt it. 
um, wood, you're gonna burn it. So just think about the surface that you're cutting on. And I just want to take this first one and kind of take a bit of a look as to how our petal is going to look here. Okay, that's big enough. All right, so I'm happy with the 12. We're gonna stick with that. And before we go any further, I am going to cut this entire row, um, this entire ball of this and uh, just get that all cut and together before we're back again so that once I start attaching, I have a fair number of them done and ready to go. I have cut 24 12 inch pieces of my 10 inch wide deco mesh with the idea that I have six segments and that I'll be adding four in each segment. It's quite likely that I will need five. So in which case then I'll need to cut um, a couple more. I may have enough on here to do um, six more. If not, I have a second roll. So I've got 24 done. I may need 30. We'll see how that goes. But what we are looking at doing is we are going to take our twist tie and I'm just going to lay it. I like the first one to go on the crossbar. I'm going to get a slightly thicker one here. So I like the first one to be right on that crossbar just because that adds a little bit of stability to that very first pedal, okay, that we're gonna be attaching. So I just have that out and kind of ready and waiting. And we're gonna take our mesh and we're gonna lay it out with the good side, so the finished side on the top and the bottom. Our two cut sides are on the left and the right. All right, and then just a slight twist. I'm gonna fold in that lower point and turn down that upper point. Not so that they meet. I still have about an inch and a half in between them. But just so that I get, again, a bit of a nice finished edge on that upper part. And all I'm gonna do is kind of squish, you know, them together just by kind of walking my fingers together so that I end up with this very big, very fancy bow tie. And then I'm going to take them and lay the top one over top of the bottom one. So lay them almost right on top of each other. I don't have them exact, but I've got them curved down. You can always do your petals so that they curve up. These ones I'm gonna to wanna to have curved down. And then I'm going to take them over to my twist tie. And of course then my twist tie pops away. And I'm going to want to I just said twist tie, didn't I? Zip tie, and I am just going to want to zip it in place. And then I can cut off that end. And we end up with our petals looking like this. Now I will say on the first one, um, I will often take my zip tie in the opposite direction. I do not do this for all of them, but just, I will take that first one and do almost like a crisscross, do an X. I'll show you what I mean in just one sec. So you can see how that X is, that I've taken it in the opposite direction and it makes it kind of sit up straight. And then that just helps all the rest of them sit up straight too. Now you could deliberately not do that so that your, your outside petals form almost like a bit of a spiral if you'd like. So good reasons to do it, good reasons not to do it depending upon the look that you're after and what you're trying to do. So all I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my next piece, do exactly the same thing, folding in those edges and then starting to squish, squish those together by walking my fingers together and then with the good sides facing me, I lay the one over the other and I just fo form a place to hold them. Grab my next zip tie. I was about to say twist tie. And I'm going to zip it in place. And the other thing that I do is that as I'm attaching these um, petals, 
I will typically alternate the direction of the zip tie, which again, just helps them kind of stay straight. Yep, I'm gonna want five. So I'm looking at this, and this is my two, and I'm gonna do three, four, five, and then my next five starts here. So I'm gonna want 30 petals cut for the outside, right? And that's the start. That's the start of our wreath. So I am going to cut my, my other six just so I can shut off my word burning tool. I don't like to leave it on when I'm not using it just because I have a tendency to forget these things. And it's so hot, I could just be sending things up in flames. So I'm gonna cut six more pieces um, and then finish this row just doing exactly what I've said. So you can see this one was the double X. Sorry, this one's the double X backwards. And then this one is angled this way. My next one I will angle this way, just so that I alternate the directions. It's not a big deal one way or the other. I just find that it helps me keep them kind of lined up properly. And I will do that entire outside row and then come back at you for the next step. Okay, six more. This is our wreath so far. So, Nice kind of, um, it's not like a bright, shiny silver, but it's got those nice silvery, sparkly tones. And what we're looking at doing now is adding in our next layer. And for that, I'm using this blue. It's gonna go on this inner second row, right? So third from the outside, second from the inside. And we're going to, to use it to kind of cover up all of these little knobby pieces. And it's such a strong color though that I have cut these slightly smaller. I don't want them um, as long as the silver ones. I want them to give up some of the color but not for it to dominate. So I've cut them 10 inches, so 10 by 10. And we're gonna do this exactly the same way. Okay, everything's sticking to everything. So I am going to, I am going to fold in one edge, fold in the other, and I'm going to inch them together. Now, this stuff has these little shiny ribbons running through it, and they don't tend to trim off as nicely so you do want to make sure that they're kind of curving down in and they're out of the way so that you're not um, you're not having those rough edges showing. And then we're just going to simply zip tie them in place. Same. Uh, okay, I'm zip tying it. I'm zip tying it backward. If your zip ties are quiet, you know you're doing them wrong. All right, give it another go. There we go. We need that, we need that ratcheting sound. Okay, so you can see that's gonna be a really pretty contrast, but it's pretty bold against the silvery color, which means it would just overtake it if I had it um, uh, showing too much. The next row, which will be a light color again, we'll kind of tone it down just a little bit more even. But I'm gonna do the same. I cut 24, so rather than, rather than the five per row, I'm thinking I just need four, but I could be wrong, in which case then I'll cut more and I'll, and I'll let you know. But I'm just going to do these sort of in between each of the existing spots. So that I get that nice fanning and overlap happening. So I'm just gonna carry on, do that whole row and then come back at ya. So no magic to it, just the same process all the way around. And look how pretty already. I really like how this blue kind of pops and we've got this, 
this uh, pewter silvery gray on the outside. I was gonna do that other blue gray on the inside and I've decided I'm just gonna do another row of this. So thank goodness I had two balls of that mesh, two rolls of it. I'm gonna do an internal layer. So again, pretty easy. We're doing the same petal, 10 inch squares again. So same as the blue. And we're just kind of swooshing it up, turning our paddle. There we go. And this time, so this is the little bit that's different. We're going to be going down into the mesh. So, you know, you could draw a rough circle if you wanted on the inside to kind of give you an idea of kind of you know, roughly where you're going to be attaching those elements, but we're taking it closer into the center this time. So you're going to, and, and this was just a little bit challenging, so you, <laughs> because you're going to take it up from the bottom over top of your petal top of your petal and I just find it's easier to do where I have it dangling over the edge of the table so that when I'm pushing down through it goes down through it and then you can either flip it over if you have to or just kind of uh, feel so two-handed for me if I sort of Make sure that's kind of locked in place there. And then, taking that up and over my petal. So again, we just want to make sure that those petals cover up all of those little um, zip ties that we have. But you can see here where that blue just kind of peeks out of there. So it's not as dominant as it is right now but it becomes this beautiful accent. So again, you are taking your square on the diagonal, scrunching it up in the middle to make your bow tie and then twisting them over top to create your petal. And then we're taking our zip tie. Let me see where I want this guy. Here. And there we go. And of course, when we're finished this, we'll go and we'll cut all those extra lengths of the zip tie in behind. But you can see this is where we're going, right? So I'm gonna carry on with that row. And then when we come back, we will be working on the center design to be able to um, really finish this wreath off and make it Christmas, I promise. Okay, this is our Wreath. So you can see that we've got a lot of the silver, we've got that hint of the blue popping through. I'm loving it. What I have planned for the center of this is using Christmas balls. So I am thinking that I will put the big one right in the center and I've got some smaller ones that I will circle around kind of on the outside. And then I will take these medium size and use them so that they're kind of sticking out. So it's kind of like the big one and these little guys are the filler, making sure that I'm gonna, you know, the main thing is I wanna cover up these little, little twist tie nubs here. So um, to, to start though, to start, let me move this out of the way. What I don't want is for me to attach these 
and then have the balls falling off of the little clasp, right? So you've got these little, little ends that can pop off of these quite easily. And when I start um, attaching these and pulling them in with uh, my zip ties, I may end up having that pop off. So the first thing I wanna do is for all of these balls, I wanna take, take some hot glue and I just wanna run a quick little bead around the base to just kind of hold those in place. You're not going to see that, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit globby or not perfectly smooth, because they're going to be attached this way. So we're going to use that hook and our zip tie to attach them to um, our mesh. So you're not going to see that part, but that little bit of precaution is going to save us a lot of grief down the road. So I'm going to get all of these glued on and then come back at you to show how we attach them. All right. Now that these are all dry, let's move them out of the way and get our wreath back in. So what I'm going to do is start with the big one right in the middle and I am going to attach it on fairly tightly. So in this mm -hmm. case, oops, got my balls flowing all over the place here. I'm going to try and aim, you know, roughly for the middle kind of idea. Put the zip tie through that hook and then down through the bottom. And there will be some movement, some play on this until we get the other. So meaning, you know, they don't like to sit up, they're gonna flop, but once we get others in there, then it'll kind of work against itself just fine. And then I have these smaller ones in the silver that I wanted to use around the bigger ball just so that they kind of nestle in down kind of around and in between each of those nubs and, and then up in these open spaces we'll put the other balls clear as mud right okay so let's kind of get started with this and that will help it become clear I think all right, you can see that I ended up putting the three big ones in the center, not just the one. Um, I, needed, I needed it to be fuller, a little bit more filler. So what I'm going to do is take the rest of my balls and I am just going to strategically place them around the wreath, creating, creating a very full, looking centered. So however it ends up looking, it's gonna be sort of like this. So I'm gonna use um, my, my zip ties the same way that I have been. I'm going to be tucking these balls in wherever I can, and I'm gonna be looking at having it kind of mound up in the center to create a very full looking very full looking center, a lot of Christmas balls. So it's our blingy, it's our blingy wreath. Okay, so I am just going to continue on and kind of fit those balls in where I can and how I can. And then I'll come back at you and show you the finished product. But I'm, I'm kind of kind of liking, okay, that needs to move over. So I'm kind of liking the direction that it's going though. And again, very different from the other Christmas wreath we did, the Jingle Bell wreath. And that's as it should be, right? You're not looking at necessarily wanting to duplicate things unless maybe you got a double door and you need two of the same wreath. That's possible. 
or you've got somebody that wants to buy them off you and they got a double door and you need two of them. But in this case, I'm putting together the one and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'll definitely show you um, what it looks like as soon as I am finished it so you can get uh, a look at the, at the finished version of it. But so cool, so cool. So easy, maybe. Just be well stocked in your zip ties. <laughs> I'll put a link in there for these little thin zip ties that I got off of Amazon, but I also get um, zip ties in multiple sizes from my dollar store as well. So don't hesitate to use those. They're just as awesome. I'm gonna carry on. I just wanted to pop on quickly and show you the finished wreath and talk about one little thing that I did that I didn't anticipate, but that it helped. So this is our big finished wreath. I really like it. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily what I planned to do. I had different balls and then they didn't work with the color of blue once the blue arrived and all that kind of thing. Now you could certainly go ahead and glue little balls in if you wanted to have it more. But what I did was I took some extra pieces of the silver mesh and uh, cut them into thinner strips and I actually wove them down in between some of these balls so that you can't see the plastic canvas at all. All you see is the mesh and that seemed to be um, perfect filler. Um, to make sure that none of that plastic canvas showed. So hopefully you kind of give this a try. It's kind of festive with the Christmas balls in the center. I like the blue and the silver because not everybody is a red and green Christmas decorator person. Um, so I definitely wanted a different color in the shop, but I wanted to show you a different alternative. And that's two different Christmas meth re mesh Christmas mesh, Christmas mesh wreaths um, that I've shown you. One in the more traditional with the jingle bells in the center, and then this one that's a little bit more blitzy, um, you know, a little bit uh, more shimmery, but both equally lovely. Hopefully, this inspires you to give one of them a try and kind of dress up your uh, your wall, your front door, um, maybe gift it, gift it to uh, someone that you love. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope to see you on the next one. And in the meantime, take care.